Jesus. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. wow. How do you think he feels about you lighting your fire with the world's fire? Oh and being turned on by the world. Jesus. And the thing of it is, he said the Holy Spirit will never leave you. Nor forsake you. Amen. So when you're going to do that act, or going to view that movie, or going to do whatever you're doing, you have to take him with you. My God. Because he never will leave you. Yes. So what we're saying in essence, my wife is not always with me, but God is. Mm -hmm. So the next time the devil woos you, take a look on the inside and tell him no, because I have my man that's watching. Come on now. Jesus. Amen. 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 Come on. God is jealous for us. That's what the scripture says. And one secular talk show host said she, what turned her away from God was because God said he was jealous for her. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she didn't understand it. No, right, right, right. Obviously. Because if you could be turned away from her, if my husband, sometimes it kind of excites you, the fact that you feel like your husband is a little bit jealous of somebody. Because yeah. there's a guy sitting next to you, you're not showing him any attention. But if your husband becomes a little jealous, like, he really does still love me, you know? He really does. That means God cares about you. He cares about what happens to you. He cares about what the devil tries to do to you. So he's telling you, I'm jealous for you. You're putting yourself in a place that is without me. I can't go in that place with you. I won't go in that place with you. Then again, he does go in that place with us. But he's, there's a brokenness. When you take God where it doesn't belong, there's a brokenness. You don't, you're not communicating with God in that place. Mm -hmm. That's broken fellowship. You never lose right, your right, relationship. Right. You God. lose your fellowship with God. My God. Come on and now. the Bible says when you extinguish his feeling for you, mm -hmm. in other words, he lives in you. Yes. Your body was created to house God. Paul said to the Corinthian church, and you look it up in 11, 1 Corinthians 11, 1 to 4, he said, I'm jealous for you. This is Paul speaking. I'm jealous for you because I preach the truth to you. But you have these other people coming. They're not saying what I taught you. They're teaching you another gospel. I'm becoming jealous because I purpose to present you up as a bride, spotless before God. Yes. So your pastor, she may see you going in a wrong way. It's happening to her. not. She becomes jealous in Christ's place for you. This is what Paul was saying. Because God has put me over you. If you're not doing the things I taught you from God, I become jealous for you. Because you belong to God. And I'm doing everything possible to put you and bring you to Christ. Ultimately, and we'll close with this. Jesus said to the church of Ephesus, which was the mega church of that time, some believe they had upwards of 50,000 members. And they were meat eaters, if you check out the book of Ephesians. Very meaty book. But God said, I take note that you're doing many works. You're checking the apostles, you're checking their credentials, you're following after their doctrines and finding some of them liars. All of that is great. Your work is off the charts. The community knows of you. Your activists, the politicians know of your work. Yet I have this against you. Not you lost your first love, you left your first love. My question is to you. Are you so busy with the blessing that you forgot the blessing? Wow. Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. Are you so concerned about the healing that you forgot the healing? Mm -hmm. wow. That's right. Do you have to go back and do your first works over? My God. Because your fire and love for God is out. Mm -hmm. And your devotion has just become a ritual. With no fire burning on the altar. My God, my God. 
Jesus said, go back. Because unless you do it for love for me, it doesn't count for me. Mm. So this is what we say today. Melody has a testimony concerning we just renewed our vows after 26 years of marriage. Amen. Amen. And seven kids. Y'all don't know we have seven. We just have a portion of them here. We have my child with my own church, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> My, my, the Lord, my husband and I have had been trying to renew our vows since we were married, since 10 years. We went from 10, we said, okay, we'll do it at 25. Okay, that didn't work. Different things came up and we couldn't do it. So when my husband turned 50 years old, we said, let's do it all together. You know, we'll, uh, we'll celebrate your birthday and we'll renew our vows. Little did we know that God had something in mind. It was a lesson to us. It was, the ceremony was to be used as a witnessing tool. Um, our anniversary night, the Lord woke my husband up with a song. He had a scenario of things that had transpired in the church where he was preaching a message and the message was hard. Pastor Rose reminded what you said about when you teach Book of Revelation. Book of Revelation is a hard book. It's hard to receive. That's why it's a blessing to it. If you read it, it's a blessing if you understand it, and it's a blessing if you do it. And um, my husband has studied the Book of Revelation from eight years old. So this song is very significant, and that it came on our anniversary night was more significant. And the song says, "Will you follow me faithfully till the end?" That's the new song. Beautiful song. And when we were preparing for the ceremony, my husband said, what song are you going to walk in on? I had no idea to choose this, but one night I woke up, one morning I woke up, all I heard was that song. I heard one of the sisters in my church singing it, and I saw myself marching down the aisle to that song. It's not a love song, it's a love song to Christ. Amen. And um, I told my husband, I want to walk in on that song. And God gave me motivation about this ceremony that we did. And my motivation was this. One, to proclaim to my friends and my family that I was truly in love with my husband of 26 years. And I was fully ready to recommit myself to him. My second reason was I wanted to really represent, truly represent the bride of Christ by helping the saints Remember that this is just a small representation of what Scripture promises that will happen to us with our Lord and Savior. There is going to be a marriage. There is going to be a wedding. Revelation 19 and chapter 20, they both talk about that bride coming down out of heaven. And that's what I saw myself as that day. A representative of almost 200 people in the audience. And I said, Lord, I can just a little bit represent what you want your church to be. I made sure I was dressed to the night. I made sure I made my own headpiece. I, everybody said I was adorable. I thought I was adorable. Work, work. <laughs> <laughs> but my motivation, my motivation was not simply me. I wanted to testify to the audience that one day we're going to walk down the aisle to our glory. Christ Hallelujah. Jesus. We're going to be presented to him spotless, yes. without stain, without wrinkle, without blemish. That is for real. That's what I wanted to portray. And my final motivation for this event was to reach as many of my family, friends, members, whoever was there, and if they hadn't started preparing themselves for that day, or if they have started, to encourage them to continue, because the day is coming, and it's sooner than we think. I feel, I feel a trepidation in my heart that is so soon, sis. I feel that it's so soon.
soon the Lord's coming. I want to encourage you, saints, if you know Jesus, get closer to him. Get closer to him, please. If you don't know him, come on up today to know him. Come up today to know him. He loves you. He died for you. If it was just you, he would have died. He suffered a horrible death, but he resurrected in victory for you, for me. And the song goes like this. Bless this morning, amen. <laughs>